serve smarter ventilation uh, product demo demo and uh, with a focus on uh, new features uh, that we've recently released uh, for the serve 2 system I will uh, go over the uh, system in general just for those of you who may not be familiar with the serve already uh, so I'll give an overview of the system smart ventilation configuration installation and operation of the serve and then we'll cover the features and options and go through uh, those new things that we've recently released uh, this webinar had been titled uh, serve smarter ventilation and i've updated that to smarter er as we have added on this is kind of the uh, third iteration of updates to the serve system that we've released so what is the serve exactly it's a smart ventilation system geared towards the residential and light commercial uh, applications it manages air quality and comfort uh, in a home or uh, commercial application it has online and local integration with external systems the energy recovery is done through a small heat pump system so it's a heat pump based energy recovery as opposed to uh, conventional ERVs and HRVs with the heat exchange core that allows for supplemental conditioning from the system so we can use that same small heat pump to add heating or cooling dehumidification uh, to the space. The airflow range is 100 to 300 CFM. So a single system can go down to maybe 600 or so square feet uh, and up to uh, 4,000 square feet or so. And it manages air quality in multiple ways, uh, handles pollutants by fresh air ventilation as well as uh, conditioning, uh, considering moisture as uh, one of those pollutants particulates via filtration and recirculation and inactive sanitation uh, with UV uh, GI uh, to kill microbes that may be on surfaces or uh, within the airstream. Smart ventilation specifically uh, that we reference the serve with, uh, it measures temperature, uh, humidity, CO2 and VOCs. Uh, these are in, on the indoor side, and then it automatically accounts for changes in pollutant levels and occupancy or activities within the space uh, to ensure uh, good air quality at all times. The system uh, senses poor air quality before the occupants do, or it should, as um, you can have impacts on uh, health and cognition. Uh, at levels well before uh, human detection. It also automatically accounts for uh, infiltration or opening uh, doors and windows or other things that uh, will impact uh, the air quality. And then it's optimized for energy conservation. So the, the serve is taking all these inputs into account, managing air quality and trying to do that um, as energy efficiently as possible. So it's reading what's going on inside but it's also taking into account uh, what's happening outside so looking at temperature and humidity from the uh, incoming stream from the outdoors and then also uh, the feedback loop from what's going on to the user is important as well so uh, that they know what's going on are things being kept uh, at a level that they would like and is a performance um, as it should be so uh, these uh, this data is very important for that reason as well so you can give that user feedback to improve things over time we also take this uh, feedback into account as well both from our customers as well as uh, data and uh, so that's some of these new features are a result of uh, of those things but also uh, we're looking at studies and different sensors and things uh, on a continual basis so we can improve the system uh, over time. <clears throat> These are just some uh, graphical rep representations of 
conventional ERV operation versus uh, serve smart ventilation operation. The top figures show CO2 and VOC levels in a high performance home, uh, just with ventilation set to uh, the ASHRAE uh, standard. So you can see it's insufficient when the building is occupied, kind of the, um, the first part of that graph, the orange and the blue. And then when uh, the occupants have left the space, that, that's the ideal air quality, uh, but it's overventilating. It's at minimal uh, level outside, but the system continues to uh, run in ventilation mode, even though uh, it's not needed. And then when occupants return to the space, uh, then it's no longer adequate. The serve is able to uh, react to that occupancy quickly. So the green background below shows ventilation periods. You can see the CO2 rises, it uh, triggers a ventilation event, and then it comes down. This particular uh, data set is from the high occupancy uh, period of time. So when there are a lot of people in the space, and then when those people leave the space, it brings things uh, back into control uh, and the space can uh, go uh, further below the set point operation. So uh, these are things that smart ventilation lets you do is you can react to what's going on inside uh, to ensure both for uh, indoor air quality as well as energy efficiency that things are optimized. Some other uh, aspects of the serve in particular for uh, related to smart ventilation are superior filtration. Uh, so we've kept that in mind. People ask why the unit can't be smaller. Um, just to maintain good airflow and good filtration, uh, unfortunately, that means that you do need uh, good surface area for the air to flow through. So we have standard uh, MERV 13 filters. Uh, but you can uh, go higher than that if you'd like. Uh, the recirculation mode is another important aspect, unique aspect of the serve. When you don't need fresh air, that recirculation mode lets you do things inside that uh, you couldn't with a once-through system. So it helps to unify air quality and comfort throughout the home. You can filter indoor particulates and scrub the indoor air. Uh, without introducing new particulates from the outside. And you can make use of stored fresh air. So spaces in the house that don't have uh, high pollutant levels, mixing the air continually through the space, then you can make use of that stored fresh air to delay needing to bring extra air in from the outside. And then the smart controls allow you to integrate with uh, things externally to the system. Uh, both inputs as well as outputs. And the online connectivity lets you uh, make use of the data that the system is recording. And so you can make adjustments or just check the performance over time. So all of these things are uh, built in standard uh, to the unit and also helps it accomplish uh, its goals. The configuration of the serve is a unitary all-in-one system. So the, the heat pump is uh, contained, fully contained in this box. There's not an indoor and an outdoor unit like you see for um, split systems. The fans are ECM variable speed. The filters are standard 10 by 20 uh, inch filters. The display is a integrated touchscreen uh, display on the unit. It's unpainted aluminum construction uh, for a sleek look and recyclability. The duct connections are all eight inch uh, connections, as I mentioned, for uh, having good airflow at low fan, fan power. And then uh, the Serve 2 is the second generation unit with uh, expanded uh, capabilities for inputs and outputs and uh, that external communication. Just quickly uh, over the, what the heat pump is, it, uh, we have a digitally controlled inverter drive. So it's a variable speed. We can optimize uh, the efficiency depending on the conditions. There's also an elect uh, electronic expansion valve that also lets us uh, uh, do this further. We use aluminum microchannel heat exchangers. So we have very low uh, refrigerant charge. 
with very good heat transfer uh, performance uh, and airflow. The configuration of the system, uh, the ducts all come out of the top of the unit. It's much like a conventional ERV or HRV. There's four duct connections, two running to the outside, so the fresh air intake, and then an exhaust to the outside. And then there's uh, the ducts that run into the house. So the return duct pulling air from uh, exhaust locations, and then a supply duct that's feeding air uh, into the house. A condensate drain um, can run either to a floor drain or a condensate pump. And then uh, the system is uh, just has this vertical orientation, um, and you you can build a platform to have it uh, higher off the ground if you like, as well. It needs to go into conditioned space. With um, it doesn't have to be fully conditioned, but roughly 50 to 85 or so degrees, uh, just to maintain good efficiency and operation of the system. Outside that range, you can uh, run into trouble, especially with um, condensate at low temperatures that can lead to uh, freeze up. Um, so you just want to make sure that um, the space is adequate uh, for that. This is a picture of uh, just a typical installation. You can see the external ducts are insulated and the internal ducts going uh, to and from the house are uninsulated. Uh, the condensate line, the system just plugs into a 120 outlet. So a 15 amp breaker is sufficient to operate it. Uh, on the top uh, view there on the left side, just shows the duct uh, configuration. The utility ducts shown are no longer present. Uh, those are just now um, incorporated into the standard return ducts. And filter access is from the top. So the return air filter and fresh air filter are uh, both accessed uh, through this uh, top panel. The ducting throughout the house that we recommend and that most spaces follow are uh, pulling air from the green areas where odors or moisture are produced. Uh, so like bathrooms, kitchen, laundry, and then supplying to bedrooms and living spaces. Uh, configuration can change depending on what uh, the homeowners want to accomplish in the house. For general air quality, uh, you may just be connecting the serve to a central air handler so the central heating or cooling system, the share uh, serve can connect to those fully and just manage the general air quality by siphoning air off of that airstream and injecting fresh air back in when needed. Uh, the local spot ventilation can be handled through the serve. So for that, the returns would need to be dedicated to the bathrooms and kitchen areas or wherever you're wanting the spot ventilation. Um, manage from, but you can still supply the fresh air uh, into a central system uh, to utilize that duct work. Or you could have dedicated ducts on the supply side as well. The airflow range is 100 to 300 CFM uh, balance flow. So you set this in relation to uh, both the house size, number of spaces to ventilate. For duct design, Hopefully a static pressure uh, goal of about 0.2 inches of water would be ideal. Um, we've written a report on kind of doing this uh, sizing calculations and why, uh, what a good uh, duct network uh, and design looks like. And in keeping air velocity 300 to 400 feet per minute uh, results in uh, good quiet ducts, low fan power. But overall the sizing will range from eight inches down to four inches. Using rigid ducts as much as possible, but flex duct in uh, certain locations can help uh, just mitigate noise transmission. And then uh, zone dampers are things that can be implemented as well. We'll look at this a bit later, but these are um, let you close down or open uh, dampers to uh, direct airflow uh, to optimize, uh, especially for 
local spot ventilation. The overall operation of the unit uh, is controlled through a reversing valve on the heat pump side to switch between heating and cooling operation. Um, and then there are dampers in the airstream that divert the airflow depending on recirculation versus uh, ventilation configuration. So that's what these schematics are meant to show. On the left side kind of shows all the different modes of operation. Uh, you also gain uh, a few modes also by having the heat pump on or off so that you may have just um, a free cooling or free heating operation where you're bringing fresh air in but energy recovery or heating or cooling are not necessary or needed. Um, and then you can also in an unpowered uh, recirculation mode just for mixing air throughout the house. The uh, ventilation heating and ventilation cooling is where the heat pump is exchanging energy uh, while doing heating or cooling at the same time. It tries to supply air into the house in a conditioned state as, as much as possible. And then the recirculation heating or cooling are used if fresh air is not uh, required in the house. And in this way, it acts more like a conventional heating or cooling system. Let me uh, just pull up questions here and see if there's um, anything relevant uh, here. I've had a few uh, pop up. Um, people are asking just if it's a conventional or used as a heating or cooling system. The serves overall functionality is managing air quality in the house uh, above and beyond anything else. So the conditioning it can do is supplementary. When it's in ventilation mode, it's putting that uh, capacity into the fresh air to bring that up to, to temperature. So the net impact on the house isn't as great as it can provide in the recirculation mode. The heat pump is also sized for uh, that energy exchange. Uh, and so its maximum capacity is about a third of a ton. So it's generally going to be too small to really um, condition a house. So it's made to work in tandem with whatever sort of main heating or cooling system someone may uh, want to have in the house. And then the uh, static pressure of the fans, it can maintain that range up to about uh, 0.8 inches of water or so, that full 300. Um, so about an inch of water, you can do 260 to 280 uh, CFM. Hopefully you're not designing ducts that are that restrictive. The monitoring built into the system is, uh, so there's air quality, indoor air quality. It has independent CO2 and VOC sensors uh, built into it that are sampling uh, from the indoor uh, airstream. In addition, temperature and humidity are read on the inside as well as the outdoor. That is uh, on the standard machine. And then something we'll look at later, a new feature is uh, sampling the air quality on the incoming uh, fresh air. And so that lets you modify ventilation based on the in, uh, outdoor air quality as well or make adjustments to uh, operation or filters. Controlling the system is done through the touchscreen controller built into the uh, front of the unit. It's a color three and a half uh, inch capacitive touch display. We've tried to design it uh, so it's easy to read and easy to navigate through all the uh, setup screens and configurations. Uh, but the, the home screen is shown here. The uh, indoor uh, conditions are under the house icon, temperature and humidity uh, inside. And then the outdoor uh, fresh air inlet, uh, temperature and humidity are under that uh, sun and clouds. It's not a true outdoor reading, but rather it's what the serve is viewing, uh, what's coming from the outdoors. And then next to that in parts per million are the CO2 and VOC readings. The bars under that indicate um, 
the air quality level, how far away you may be from the uh, set point. So green would indicate that you're in a good range. <clears throat> The set points then, uh, we'll cover this as uh, something that's changed uh, recently, but the uh, main settings are the CO2 and VOC set points in parts per million, and then you're setting a heating and cooling set point as well. So the, the serve is looking at these to decide what mode of operation uh, that were in a previous slide it should be in. Uh, it's also taking into account the outdoor uh, conditions relative to inside uh, to make optimal uh, decisions based on uh, efficiency. So um, you're setting these set points and then the complexity is really behind the scenes in the serve uh, automatically managing these things. Some uh, features and options of the unit then the filtration is something that um, is important in maintaining air quality as well. So you want to filter particulates. The system uses standard 10 by 20 filters. Uh, they're MERV 13, one inch thick. We wanted to design the system to make filtered changes uh, easy and inexpensive to encourage them as often as possible. Um, and so, uh, these are just standard sizes you can buy uh, uh, locally or online as well. Uh, the system can also accommodate thicker uh, two-inch filters, or you can stack multiple uh, one-inch filters to uh, get the filtration level and features that you'd like. So we also offer odor and VOC absorbing uh, filters, both carbon, as well as a special one called color fill that changes color as it absorbs and um, uh, absorbs these uh, pollutants. The uh, filter reminders, these are a newer uh, feature uh, that are incorporated, so the system will automatically let you know when it's time to change. You can keep track either by runtime or by, um, uh, by a date. And so, um, these can differ as well. So the fresh air filter, generally it's a lot dirtier outside. And so that may need to be changed monthly as opposed to maybe every uh, couple months for the return air filter. So these let you just kind of gauge things over time and make adjustments uh, for these reminders. The communication besides the uh, touch screen um, there are also apps online, so Wi-Fi is built into the system, so most of our customers do connect their uh, unit online, and uh, that's built in standard. And Ocean is a local wireless uh, communication that is also built into the unit. This is used for the wireless options uh, that we offer, so uh, internet isn't needed for that communication, um, but uh, Wi-Fi lets you control it from a smartphone, tablet, or computer anywhere. Uh, that also allows the uh, over-the-air updates uh, to the software. And um, uh, that's where the data is recorded so you can view historic data for your unit. And then there's also an Alexa skill for the serve so you can um, use voice commands to, to control it. These are uh, snapshots of the online dashboard and control. So the controller uh, that you would view online is identical to the one on the unit. So you're familiar with using that. Below that, the uh, data I showed, that was uh, just pulled directly from, uh, that was a screenshot uh, from what's displayed online for the air quality. You can also view temperature and humidity uh, data as well. And then you have uh, access to that. So you can download your data over a period of time to make use of that however you'd like. Uh, the analytics, uh, these are something we cover in another webinar, uh, IAQ, uh, but that's where you really get the uh, feedback on your house overall, how it's performing based on different metrics. And so you can see this uh, month by month or week by week to see uh, how your house is performing, uh, both versus standard ventilation code 
as well as the serve community as a whole. The serve Alexa skill is a, we released this a, uh, a few months ago, uh, but this lets you use voice commands to get current conditions from the serve. So you can ask what the air quality is. You can uh, make changes to set points. You can trigger ventilation. So if you're uh, cooking or doing something else, you can just say, hey Alexa, tell the serve to ventilate for 30 minutes and it will automatically uh, do that. So it makes that nice and easy. And then you can uh, set up smart home routines. So this lets uh, certain events occur that maybe uh, other devices you have in your house that are connected this can trigger different serve functions to occur. And then you can also use these routines to set schedules on the serve. This is a function that we're working on um, through our online uh, dashboard, uh, but right now you would be able to uh, set schedules to change serve settings um, through the Alexa skill. Other communication to the outside are, uh, so there's Wi-Fi and then there's wired inputs and wired outputs and then the wireless local and ocean devices. Uh, so the inputs are things that the serve detects an input from an external device to trigger operation uh, to occur. And then outputs are where the serve is sending uh, a signal to something externally to turn it on or off. The wired inputs, the serve standard has one uh, built into it, uh, one input and one output uh, built into it. Um, so it was dry contact or 24 volt uh, output and then a dry contact or 24 volt sense on the inputs. To expand beyond that, you can add uh, three input channels and six output channels through our expansion board. Uh, these are all wired. Uh, to the serve itself. Looking specifically at the wired inputs and what they can do. Uh, so this is something that uh, is triggering the serve to do something specific. Uh, so above you see the um, I, zero, one, two, three. These are the different uh, input channels if you have the expansion board. And then uh, the different options for for that or down below. So you can, based on an external trigger, tell the serve to ventilate, you can tell it to heat, cool, recirculate, or you can halt the operation if you wanted the serve to stop for some reason if something externally was happening. So there's a lot of flexibility built into these, um, these options. The wired outputs then are where the serve is controlling something externally based on uh, its own uh, configuration. So for these you can control things based on um, you can control heating or cooling, you can control uh, dehumidification or humidification. So our, we had an article last month on uh, using an inline dehumidifier with the serve. So this would be controlled through a um, through an output channel. Uh, ventilation, external ventilation devices. GeoBoost is a preconditioning uh, ground loop exchanger, so that uh, is controlled. That circulation pump would be controlled through an output channel. Fan interlock, if you're connecting to a central air handler and you need the fan to run anytime the serve is operating, fan interlock would be used for that purpose. And then probably the most common function is uh, the zone dampers. So the serve controls the zone dampers uh, directly through output channel. So it is opening and closing those dampers in this manner. <clears throat> Wireless devices, these use that local and ocean uh, communication. So up to 18 different devices can be connected to the serve. You can use these to do different functions. Uh, the wall switches most commonly uh, for bathroom or kitchen venting, and that triggers ventilation. Active circuit transmitters wire to electrical circuits, and you can trigger ventilation uh, that way. 
so a bathroom light or a kitchen vent hood are probably the most common uses for that. So anytime those circuits are energized, it sends a set wireless signal to the serve to start ventilating. Remote sensors, we have temperature, humidity, CO2, uh, wireless remote sensors. Uh, these have different functions that can be used with the serve. And then wireless relays, uh, like the wired output channels, these wireless relays can be used to uh, trigger things externally, heating or cooling, the GeoBoost pump, things of that nature. Remote venting done through the bathroom uh, or the, the wireless wall switch or the active circuit transmitter. The serve can recognize these uh, individually, so you can name them wherever they may be located. And then each of these devices can have a different ventilation time length and fan speed. So you can have the, the master bathroom vent longer with higher airflow than say a half bath or something like that. So there's flexibility uh, in that. The wall switches also are battery free. So uh, just pressing the switch is enough to generate the energy needed to transmit a signal uh, to the serve. Zone dampers can layer on top of these. So once these are configured on the um, output channel for controlling, then you would link these to the different devices. Uh, so after you would set the ventilation uh, at the bottom there shows configuring a wall switch or, or a circuit transmitter you're setting the ventilation time length and fan speed, and then you can select uh, the targeted zones. So if you had a master bathroom uh, and then a half bath and kitchen zone, if you link a uh, wall switch to the master bath, whenever that would be pressed, it would close down the zones going to the kitchen and half bath. So that would let you target the airflow more specifically to the uh, zone that is actively calling for ventilation. You can also do this on the supply side. So say anytime the master bathroom switch is pressed, uh, you could have, if you had supply zone dampers, you could target the uh, supply uh, fresh air to go more specifically towards say the master uh, bedroom area. Uh, so you, you have flexibility this way as well for that targeted uh, zone damper. UV is an option we added um, over a year ago now, but this is active um, UV built right into the serve. You can also add this externally, but uh, internally then you can disinfect the heat exchanger as well as the air passing over it. Uh, it's an 18 watt um, UV light source uh, with no uh, ozone production. So this has been a very popular option with um, COVID, trying to actively kill any airborne uh, transmissible uh, diseases. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the new options and features. Uh, some of these build upon what uh, the serve could already do. Uh, and then some of these are new uh, devices that um, we haven't had that before. The uh, CO2, previously CO2 and VOCs share, shared the same set point, uh, but we've seen a need to uh, separate these out. So the new program allows the user to set independent um, set points for CO2 versus VOCs. Uh, so Generally, you, you may set the CO2 a bit lower than VOCs. Uh, it's a total VOC reading, so it's not specifically measuring ones that are necessarily bad. Uh, and so this just gives you more flexibility in a space where you just may have higher VOC levels. Um, previously, you uh, or you still can disable the VOC from triggering ventilation, but this just lets you instead set a higher uh, triggering set point if you're okay with um, slightly elevated VOC levels. The other change is to the scheduled ventilation. 
So this is, um, previously this was out of an hour period and you would just set, if you wanted a baseline level of ventilation uh, done, no matter what's going on. Um, so 10% would mean six minutes out of every hour the server would ventilate. We've expanded this to let you set both that event period as well as the interval. So uh, in this case, you could set the serve to ventilate 10 minutes out of every three hour interval, no matter what's going on. So even if your air quality is uh, fine and you don't need ventilation, this would uh, this just lets you add a base level. This is how really how conventional ERVs and HRVs operate uh, on a schedule. Uh, so this just lets you set a baseline level of ventilation no matter what. Some new functionality for the remote sensors. Um, previously, the CERV could use the remote temperature, humidity, and CO2 sensors to trigger things externally. But now uh, you can use the sensors to do internal functions uh, on the CERV. So um, the remote temperature humidity sensor, it's a combined temperature humidity, you can now use the temperature located somewhere else in the house to trigger the CERV's uh, heating or cooling function uh, in addition to the built-in um, temperature that the CERV is reading uh, that's kind of coming from all throughout the house. So this would let you specifically put it in some other space and tell the serve to heat or cool based on what's going on there. Humidity ventilation trigger. Uh, this then uses that same temperature humidity sensor to activate ventilation in the serve based on humidity. Uh, so you would use these, uh, you can see in these pictures, um, on the left hand side, the sensor is located in the bathroom. So this would be for triggering ventilation uh, from a shower. And then uh, the bottom right shows the sensor located uh, near the cooktop. So uh, cooking, producing um, humidity that way can also uh, trigger ventilation. As far as setting that up, you will select a high or low sensitivity. So a high sensitivity would mean that a small change in humidity will trigger the serve to ventilate, while a uh, low sensitivity would mean you need a larger, uh, more significant change to trigger ventil uh, ventilation. Um, places with lower uh, humidity levels um, versus locations with higher humidity levels, um, this is where you may uh, use that. So climates that have lower humidity versus higher. Uh, you then set a ventilation time length. So it's not just going to run to bring you down to a certain humidity level. Uh, that can get you into trouble depending on kind of what's going on in the house. But this just lets you say, hey, I want to ventilate for 30 minutes anytime it detects a, um, uh, a change in uh, humidity, uh, an increase in humidity. So there is a termination uh, to this uh, ventilation. And then you can, uh, you also set a minimum uh, humidity level uh, to where it will activate. So you can retain moisture in the house when the uh, humidity is lower. So in the winter time, you may not want this to activate. So this can automatically take that into account and retain that moisture in the home if you don't want to expel that to the outside. And then you can also link this to a zone damper like you would the circuit transmitter or the wireless switch. Um, so it can specifically target that space. The remote CO2 sensor, so this also has temperature and humidity built into it. So you can activate all those functions at once if you want, um, but these can, uh, you can now use the CO2 level in a specific space to trigger ventilation on the serve. So uh, generally this would be in like bedrooms or living spaces where you want occupancy in that room to uh, trigger ventilation sooner than the, may, the serve may pick up from kind of the overall house uh, uh, air quality. 
you can link this to zone dampers too. So on the exhaust side, you may um, have that uh, closed down dampers that are located in uh, regions further away from the source of the CO2. And then if you had supply dampers, you could also direct the fresh air uh, to that specific room. So the master bedroom, if that's where this is located. Uh, you could have the fresh air mostly diverted to that specific uh, location. And you can either use the set point, um, you can either have a custom set point and have this different from the serves global uh, air quality set point, uh, or you can just link it to the serve and whatever you might set for the serve uh, CO2 level, uh, this would follow suit. So some new wireless devices we released are an occupancy sensor. Uh, this uh, wireless sensor will uh, can be used to trigger ventilation. So you may have um, several of these in one location. So you may have a wall switch along with an occupancy sensor, along with a humidity sensor, and any of those could trigger ventilation in the serve, but maybe for um, for different reasons. So humidity might trigger it versus using the uh, restroom uh, that may be triggered in a different way because obviously humidity would not trigger it when you're just uh, simply using the toilet. Contact sensor, these are used, uh, also can be used for triggering ventilation. So if it's attached to a door, anytime that door is shut, it could tell the serve to ventilate. You can also use these to stop operation. So if you like to open windows, uh, you may have it on a window that you commonly open, and then you could uh, have the serve uh, stop operating whenever you have the windows open. Serve IR is uh, something new. This is what we've written about in our Magic uh, Box Mechanical Room articles. This is uh, integrating the serve with a ducted mini split. So this controller is what um, what controls the mini split. It can be set as a generic, just kind of a universal thermostat to control heating or cooling systems, or specifically you can select uh, certain brands of ducted mini splits, and that gives the serve um, control over that system. And we work with them here at our facility to optimize that operation. So. Uh, you can do up to a one-ton ducted mini-split installed in line with the serve. This increases the heating or cooling capacity through the ventilation ducts. And then uh, that serve control then will optimize for efficiency both in ventilation versus recirculation modes. So we can stage the heating or cooling of both the serve and uh, the mini-split to optimize that. And then you can also use those remote uh, uh, temperature sensors or the built-in uh, temperature reading from the serve uh, can be linked to this uh, controller to optimize where you'd want to control the temperature from. And then some advanced features. Um, previously, just the assessment interval was something that you could set here. That's the time between uh, the serve updating its readings that you can set. Um, if the fans, if the serve uh, sits off in energy saver mode because all the set points are satisfied, uh, the assessment interval has the fans run periodically to update their readings to see if something's needed. So we've expanded this um, screen to be advanced configuration uh, with these new features being the free cooling economizer and the outside VOC sensor. So the free cooling economizer is something that is uh, lets you do free cooling mode down to a secondary cooling set point. So previously free cooling is something that the serve would do automatically, but there's something times when people want the serve to do as much cooling as it can uh, beyond what you may have set for the serve's cooling set point. So that's what this does you set an offset from your cooling set point and any time outside conditions are favorable to just bring that outside air in to help cool uh, it will use this uh, set point um, 
automatically so you don't have to do anything else uh, you can just have it uh, look at what's going on inside versus outside and then bringing in that fresh air to help cool obviously that will also be beneficial for uh, air quality so it may in the swing season especially if you have this set the serve may be uh, doing a lot of free cooling at night and really not have to do any uh, ventilation at all during the daytime because the air quality has uh, been brought down um, the pollutant level so low during the nighttime that it can really coast through the daytime when it may not be as favorable to do ventilation. So this can help with efficiency uh, quite a bit as well. The outdoor VOC sensor is an option that uh, you can purchase. This goes in the outdoor airstream and lets us sort of measure the VOC levels, uh, what's coming from the outside. It can either just be used for informational purposes to kind of track what's going on outside, or the user can enable the outside VOC prevention uh, where the server will monitor what's going on outdoors versus indoors, and it can alter the operation and disable uh, VOCs from triggering uh, ventilation. So if you have wildfires or uh, neighbors that like to burn things or other outdoor pollutants that may be of a concern, bringing those indoors uh, can increase the indoor VOC levels, but bringing in more fresh air because those levels have increased would just make things worse. So this can automatically then um, disable VOCs from triggering ventilation. Uh, so then you won't get into that kind of a situation. It'll also notify the user that this operation is going on. So you can make further adjustments uh, to the uh, ventilation setting and control, or you may then uh, use a specific filter, an odor, VOC absorbing filter, carbon filter uh, during these times to, to help uh, take those pollutants out. Um, wildfires especially, uh, as things have gotten really bad, um, you may want to really disable all ventilation from occurring and you yourself are manually just, when you know it's not smoky outside, trigger ventilation for short periods of time. I know uh, some of our customers out west, uh, things have just been so bad that uh, you really want the system running in uh, recirculation mode inside and you don't there's periods of time when you don't want any ventilation uh, to occur. So this would kind of notify you of that to let you know that um, you should look into things uh, closer, but most of the time also you can, things are so bad you can smell and see the smoke outside, unfortunately. Um, but there's also some other sources, um, uh, dryer vents or car pollution or other things that are going on. Um, that you may not be able to tell yourself are happening, but the, the server will be able to pick that up and automatically adjust or notify. So that's it in terms of uh, the serve operation and what's new. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to submit those. Uh, I see some have already come in, so I'll try to adjust those, uh, address those here. Uh, but thanks for attending, and like I said, this will be available online for uh, viewing at a future time, so um, if you need to leave, uh, go ahead, but I'll try to get through these questions as much as I can. Let's see. You know, someone asked about wildfire smoke and uh, can the serve adjust for that and that outdoor VOC sensor is something uh, that it can do. Um, something we're looking into as well because the serve is connected online are tapping into other air quality uh, indices and metrics uh, so we can pull those into the serves operation to make uh, adjustments based on those external things as well. <clears throat> uh, 
for uh let's see here someone asked about static air pressure i think we had uh, covered that and um some of the specifications uh or those are located on our website too the uh, energy recovery that is tied to the heat pump there's no uh, heat exchange core like a conventional erv or hrv and so that's all done through the heat pump the uh, free heating and free cooling mode um, that is just like opening windows um, except the air coming in uh, through the serve is uh, filtered and perhaps passes over the uv as well if you have that option and then that's done automatically so you're not having to manually open and close windows but i know a lot of people like to to open and close windows and so there's no problem uh, doing that the serve can just assist you as well um, but especially people with um, aller allergies um, opening windows um, can affect uh, how they feel so this would uh, avoid that Someone asked about the fan noise. The fan noise is really related to the ducting. Um, if things are designed and installed uh, in a good manner, there should really be minimal fan noise. Uh, that The fans can run at a low speed, low static pressure. Um, you really shouldn't even know the system is running. If uh, the ducts are restrictive and um, the fans are having to run at a higher speed, and the ducts are transmitting noise or generating noise. Uh, ducts are, it's like a pipe organ or a wind instrument uh, that you can generate noise within the ducts as well. So it, um, measuring the sound of the unit itself without anything connected doesn't do you much good. It's really, uh, you need to uh, look at as a system as a whole and uh, measure the air um, uh, or measure noise uh, on a system connected to ductwork. You can do things like using flex duct, or we also sell a uh, muffler that can be put on the uh, supply outlet of the serve. Generally, there wouldn't be much uh, noise transmission on the return uh, exhaust side uh, pulling from the spaces. But some places that are extra sensitive to noise, you may have a, a muffler both on the return as well as the supply side. Let's see. If uh, for professional HVAC installers, um, in some locations we have people that we've worked with before and can recommend. Usually we're working with someone uh, local that's new. The installation, as you saw for the system itself, is very simple. It's like uh, connecting ducts, plugging it into an outlet, and connecting condensate drain. Um, the most important aspect is the ducting design and installation uh, by far. So uh, that's something that uh, any installer would have the capability of, to do, but you want to make, make sure that you use somebody that um, does good design and installation. But there's nothing unique or complex about the serve install itself.
And then uh, uh, someone asked about adding a dehumidifier uh, to the serve. So that gives you that independent control over humidity and temperature. And having it ducted in line with the serve then boosts the dehumidifier's performance. Uh, since it's not having to deal first with a uh, temperature change, the serve uh, can be supplying air that's already at dew point. And then the dehumidifier uh, has much more capacity and efficiency just taking that air right down uh, to remove the moisture. Uh, so it's a very good configuration. Uh, we also tested that in line um, uh, dehumidifier with the ducted mini split. And uh, so the serve supplying air to both of those and that increases their efficiency and capacity uh, quite a bit. And you get that dehumidification then uh, both in ventilation as well as recirculation modes. And especially in the swing seasons when you really don't need much cooling in the house, uh, but you may have a higher moisture load, um, that's what the dehumidifier uh, does best. So. The one ton capacity limit to ducting in line with the serve is uh, just uh, airflow matching. So um, a one ton, about three to 400 CFM, that amount of airflow is okay to go through the serve. Higher than that, then uh, you can do, but you would want to have a separate return uh, so you're not restricting the airflow that's running through the, the ducted unit. See here, so a few more questions. Try to get through these. I know we're a bit over time now, but as I said, this will be recorded uh, for later. Uh, mo someone's asking about mold spores. Those are a symptom of having um, moisture in the house somewhere, a moisture issue. So first and foremost, uh, to address any um, moisture concerns in the house, uh, the serve can help by uh, cooling, dehumidifying, uh, moving air through a space so there's no stagnation where a higher humidity can occur. And then the, the high filtration level can capture mold spores as too. Um, so hopefully capturing mold spores coming from outside and then inside any mold spores generated, uh, those would also be captured, but those should be uh, addressed um, by taking care of any moisture issues specifically. For heat pump water heaters, uh, having a return in that location, the serve can help spread that uh, cool dehumidified air around the house. Uh, it's beneficial in the summer. In the winter time then, it can help maintain the temperature in the room where the heat pump water heater is located uh, to help it operate more efficiently. Particulate sensors are something we're looking at. The uh, technology is not to where it needs to be in terms of low cost sensors to, um, to really do anything useful. It can tell you when events are occurring, uh, but these are the same events you would pick up by uh, the VOC sensor, uh, mainly like cooking, things like that, to really have an impact and uh, let you do things uh, uniquely using particulates, you need to accurately measure below uh, 2.5 micron levels. And so these are sensor technologies we're currently uh, assessing, and I think over the next year we uh, should have something uh, to offer in that regards. But particulates are very important for air quality. Uh, but right now, the lower cost sensors just um, aren't accurate and, and measure what's needed to, to really give anything useful there. 
Yes, we do uh, sell into Canada. That's a very large market uh, for us. And in some locations, uh, like in the US, we have installers we've worked with before. So that's uh, not an issue. The serve is UL listed both for the US and Canada. Someone asked about the GeoBoost um, option versus an earth tube. So the GeoBoost uses either a geothermal well or shallow uh, ground loop to precondition the air uh, before it reaches the serve. So this boosts the serve's capacity and efficiency. Um, an earth tube is a uh, similar technology. This is where you bury an actual uh, duct in the ground and the just by conduction then as the air is passing through it, it'll increase or decrease in temperature. The main difference is the GeoBoost to install is much more simple and cost effective uh, and has less maintenance. Uh, so the earth tube, you're bringing your fresh air through a dark, moist, uh, warm environment. Uh, so that can create issues with, uh, with mold and things like that if uh, things aren't maintained very well. So that's for sure a consideration. Um, there are some earth tube kits you can buy, but they are fairly expensive. And the um, the land you need to, to install these is um, much more than you need for GeoBoost. Uh, an easy way to run a ground loop for GeoBoost is just to run some PEX tubing around the house foundation before you backfill. So you may just run a couple loops of that. And for the cost of PEX, well, you have your, your ground loop. Uh, the serve can also easily control the circulation pump. It's not always beneficial to have a um, preconditioner. And so the serve can automatically do that and control the GeoBoost. It runs tests to see if it's advantageous to have that or not. Sometimes you just want to bring fresh air in without having it preconditioned. The earth tube makes that uh, more difficult. So you, to accomplish that, you're not just turning a pump on or off. You'd have to have uh, dampers that would divert the airflow through the earth tube or uh, or not through it. So those are the main uh, considerations that way. In terms of design services that we offer, uh, we can look at a floor plan and do a simple uh, layout for ventilation airflows uh, and locations of supplies and returns. We don't do duct design, uh, so we can recommend engineers that uh, do offer that surface uh, service, but that's uh, tied to the framing and much more uh, complicated. So it's not something we offer specifically, but we can give guidance on uh, what's needed for someone to do the uh, ducting design. So in, in addition to the zone dampers being used for uh, spot ventilation, they can also be used in um, uh, multifamily uh, home. So if you have an in-law suite, or um, a duplex or things like that. The dampers can be used to um, just do time zone between uh, two spaces. So in that regards, uh, they can be used. Uh, you wanna check local building codes carefully and make sure that it's approved to be used in that manner. Some places may restrict you from doing that, but the serve is able to operate the zone dampers in a way that air won't be mixed uh, between the units but you may have to do something like using uh, certain zone dampers that um, or smoke fire dampers or things of that nature. Um, so you can use one unit between one serve unit between uh, multiple uh, units. Uh, someone's asking about specific 
looking for HVAC companies for install, if you uh, fill out the contact form, uh, that'll come to us and we can answer any questions and then uh, look and see if we have somebody to recommend in your area. Radon, uh, so in addition to particulates, radon is for sure another pollutant that is important to monitor in the home. That's something that's highly regulated. So we've looked at that here and uh, studied it, but it's not something that you can easily just have a sensor we can build into the serve. It's regulated state by state, who can measure radon, who can mitigate it. Um, so for this, then it's recommended to just get your own electronic radon sensor and measure it over time. The serves general uh, operation may take care of that. Um, if not, then if your radon levels are higher, uh, then you may have to set that scheduled uh, base ventilation uh, to help bring in uh, sufficient air to take care of that then. Uh, if, if high enough ventilation is needed to mitigate radon, then also looking at uh, actively mitigating it by sealing up. You can also set a positive pressure on the SERS fans when in vent mode. That can also help just prevent radon from entering the house. Uh, so there are different things you can do to, um, um, to help reduce radon levels. I, I don't know if there is, but if there's a radon sensor that has an output for triggering an alarm or something, that could be connected to the serves input channel to trigger ventilation at a certain level. So there would be an option like that. And then other uh, air quality devices, um, there's a low cost, uh, just uh, kind of remote air quality sensors you can buy. Uh, these are things we're looking at as well, um, uh, integrating with those uh, types of systems that would allow you to trigger the serve. And so for sure, that's a future offering that we, we can do and are actively looking at. Yeah, the fans are capable of doing um, positive pressure. You don't want to drive too much airflow into the house in that manner. So um, you generally don't really have um, too great of a positive uh, pressure on the house. Um, so it's something you'd want to measure and uh, tune the fans uh, for if you're specifically wanting to, to do that. Driving too much then you can create uh, issues in your building on materials just as that air has to find its way out of the house somewhere you don't want it to be um, creating especially moisture uh, issues. Yeah, the positive pressure for radon is definitely something uh, that can help. Um, but you would not want to set the pressure specifically to uh, do that above a nominal uh, level. So if you um, like setting the baseline ventilation, if you're having to set that too high to where it's really ventilating a lot of the time just to address radon, you should do things, uh, other things to help actively mitigate it by sealing or adding a sub slab. Uh, uh, ventilator, things of that nature, uh, but uh, ventilation can for sure uh, impact and um, lower the radon level. All right, well that looks like uh, all the questions. If uh, you think of other things, um, feel free to contact us, uh, uh, submit a contact form online, give us a call, send us an email. Uh, happy to look at uh, projects for you, um, but uh, thank you for attending, and uh, we hope to talk with you soon. Bye.